We know now with certainty that humans lived in the Americas more than 20,000 years ago. The proof lies preserved in stone, ancient footprints pressed into the mud of a long vanished lake bed frozen in time beneath the desert sands. But one question has haunted archaeologists ever since. How did these people carry their world with them? At the height of the last ice age, the Americas were not a gentle place. Vast frozen plains stretched to the horizon. Dense forests, treacherous wetlands, shifting lakes, and towering walls of ice defined the land. Dangerous animals roamed freely, yet none had been domesticated. Horses, oxen, dogs trained for labor, none of these tools existed yet. And the wheel? It was still thousands of years in the future. These early people had no carts, no pack animals, no vehicles of any kind. They had only their bodies, their ingenuity, and the relentless demand to move. They were not farmers settled into villages. They were nomads, following migrating herds, seasonal plants, and water sources that shifted with climate and time. Staying in one place too long meant starvation or death. To survive, they had to travel constantly. Which raises the impossible question. Did Ice Age families really carry firewood, butchered meat, hides, stone tools, and even children across this brutal landscape on their backs alone? Or had they invented something far more ingenious long before animals were domesticated or wheels were ever conceived? Now, a groundbreaking archaeological discovery has finally given us an answer. At White Sands National Park in New Mexico, researchers uncovered something extraordinary. Alongside ancient human footprints preserved in Ice Age sediments, they found long, deliberate drag marks carved into the mud. These were not random scratches. They were evidence of technology. More than 22,000 years ago, people here were pulling a travois, a simple but revolutionary transport device made from two wooden poles lashed together and dragged behind a person to haul heavy loads. This was not just the earliest known transport system in the Americas. According to current archaeological evidence, it may be the oldest example of engineered human load transport anywhere on Earth older than carts, sleds, or any other known vehicle technology. The setting for this discovery is the vast gypsum dune field of the Tularosa Basin in south-central New Mexico. Today, White Sands is a blinding landscape of white dunes, but during the late Pleistocene, it looked nothing like it does now. Back then, the basin held a large, shallow body of water known as Lake Otero. As the climate fluctuated, the lake expanded and retreated, depositing fine muds, silts, and evaporitic sediments along its shores. When the water evaporated, it left behind flat, soft surfaces capable of capturing footprints and preserving them. These landscapes are fragile archives of movement. When a human stepped onto wet or slushy lake bed mud, their foot sank in, compressing the sediment. If conditions were right, that impression was quickly buried by new deposits or sealed as the surface dried, locking the footprint in place for tens of thousands of years. Within this fossilized network, researchers noticed something unusual. Alongside human footprints were consistent drag traces. Some appeared as narrow, deep grooves. Others were wider and shallower. Most striking of all were pairs of parallel grooves running side by side for dozens of meters. In several locations, human footprints appeared directly between the grooves, showing a person walking forward while dragging a frame behind them. In other areas, drag marks crossed over older footprints, revealing a clear sequence of movement across the landscape. Crucially, no animal tracks accompanied these marks. They were not pulled by mammoths, not by ancient camels, not by any animal at all. They were pulled by people. 
The spacing of the twin grooves matched exactly what we would expect if two long wooden poles were tied together at one end and dragged along the ground, precisely how a travoy functions. To test this interpretation, researchers built replica travoy sleds and dragged them across wet sediment under controlled conditions. The results were unmistakable. The experimental drag marks mirrored the ancient ones in depth, spacing, and form. The conclusion was unavoidable. These Ice Age people had engineered a transport system. To understand just how remarkable this is, we need to consider the travois itself. A travois is a simple transport frame made of wooden poles. Historically, indigenous peoples of North America, especially on the Great Plains, used travois pulled by dogs and later by horses to move hides, firewood, household goods, and children. What makes white sands extraordinary is that this same principle appears here without animal traction more than 22,000 years ago. No earlier travois marks have been identified anywhere else on Earth. There is no older archaeological evidence of humans deliberately engineering a device to move heavy loads across land. Long before agriculture, long before metal tools, long before domesticated animals or wheels, humans in Ice Age North America found a way to drag their entire world with them. But how do we know these marks are truly this old? The dating of the White Sands footprints and drag marks was confirmed using multiple independent scientific methods. The first line of evidence came from radiocarbon dating of tiny seeds belonging to Rupia serosa, an aquatic plant that once grew along the shores of Lake Otero. These seeds were embedded in the same sediment layers as the footprints and drag marks. Radiocarbon analysis consistently placed them between 21,000 and 23,000 years old. Because rupia is aquatic, some scientists raised concerns about the reservoir effect, the possibility that the plants absorbed older carbon dissolved in lake water, making the dates appear older than they truly were. To address this, researchers turned to another powerful method, Optically Stimulated Luminescence, or OSL. This technique determines how long grains of sand and silt have been buried since they were last exposed to sunlight. The OSL results matched the radiocarbon dates, confirming that the sediments had remained undisturbed since the late Ice Age. Stratigraphy, the study of sediment layers, provided yet another confirmation. The tracks sit within a continuous, undisturbed sequence of lakebed deposits, clearly formed on ancient surfaces and naturally buried over time. Pollen samples from the same layers further confirmed the environmental conditions of the period. Radiocarbon dating, luminescence dating, and transporting heavy loads in North America during the peak of the last ice age. This discovery doesn't just refine our timeline, it rewrites the story. For much of the 20th century, textbooks taught that humans arrived in the Americas around 13,000 years ago with the Clovis culture. The White Sands footprints shattered that belief. The drag marks go even further. They reveal not just presence, but innovation. People do not arrive in a new continent and instantly invent specialized technology. Innovation requires familiarity, experimentation, and deep knowledge of the land. To design and rely on a travois system capable of hauling supplies across mudflats, these people must have already lived here long enough to understand the terrain, the seasons, and the demands of survival which means their arrival likely predates even the oldest footprints we found. In the years ahead, new excavations may reveal similar drag marks elsewhere. We may one day find preserved fragments of travois frames or chemical traces revealing what was being hauled across these ancient landscapes. Each new discovery brings us closer to understanding not just where early humans went, but how they lived. Thank you for watching. If you found this exploration meaningful, 
Please like, subscribe, and share your thoughts below. Until next time, keep exploring.